Uh, my story about fashion is very tied to my older brother, and we're very different people. Uh, like straight up, he's he's a stone cold thug. <laughs> you know, he's got tattoos. He has a body type that I describe as prison built. It's like he has muscles in places that no machine works out. It's the kind of muscles you get disposing of dead bodies. At least that's what I think. Um, this is a story of my brother that sets up kind of well. Once he was living in Houston and he called me on the phone and he's very serious. And he's like, yo, Jordan. Think about getting a tattoo. <laughs> and I was like, you really didn't need to call me long distance for this. <laughs> He's like, nah, 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 fuck that. I was thinking about getting your name. And Kaya did, it's my younger brother. His name. Both your names tattooed on my chest. <laughs> and I was like, uh, you really don't need to do that, dog. <laughs> but he did it anyway. <laughs> because that's what thugs do. They don't listen. So basically there's a time that he went to visit my dad who lives in Houston. He was supposed to be gone for like maybe a month, no longer than that. But because of some immigration issues, he was, gone, he was, long, he was there longer than he should have been. So one month stretched into two months, stretched into three months, stretched into four months. And as he was gone, at some point I started investigating his room, as you should do. And I was finding all these things, I was finding books, I was finding a lot of CDs, a lot of mixtapes. This is around 2004. And at some point, I found his backpack. And inside this backpack was a rubber band just stuffed with money. Stuffed with money. And I don't think it was from his paper route. <laughs> so at the time, I was in night school. I was taking this course. We had to buy a textbook. I had a job but he didn't have the money to buy a textbook at the time. And I was like, you know what? I think I'll just grab $20 from my brother's backpack, I'll put it back on Friday when I get paid, and it's all good. And I did. Took the $20, I got paid, put the $20 back. And a few weeks later, I was like, oh, I really want to buy this book. <laughs> Cost around $40. So I took $40 out. I was like, I'll pay it back on Friday. That Friday, I put in $20. As time progressed, my taste changed. I was like, you know what? I think I want to buy this shirt. I'm going to take out $60. I took out $60, and I put a goddamn cent back. And as the weeks progressed, it got worse. I was spending a lot of time shopping at my sartorial store of choice known as American Eagle Outfitters. <laughs> Fine establishment of graphic tees. <laughs> boot cut denim. <laughs> things of that sort. And he was gone so long, I felt like he was never coming back. I was convinced he wasn't coming back. That's why I was spending all this money. But, he did come back. <laughs> and we've never really had a really great relationship. It's always been a little tense. But when he came back, and I knew that he would check his backpack and find that I'd spent at least $1,600 of what I'm sure, <laughs> of what I'm sure is drug money. <laughs> So for the first few days that he was back, I was being the nicest motherfucker. I couldn't believe how nice I was being. I was like, I was just like, I was just caring about his life in a way I've never cared before. So 
oh, hey, Tess, what's up? Oh, how was the trip? Oh, it was hot in Houston? Word, man, that's crazy. <laughs> but eventually, after a few days, he didn't say anything to me for a few days. But then at one point, a few days later, maybe three or four days after I'd been, that's to me very nice to him. We do not talk like that. And he was like, oh, yo, Jordan, can you come to my room for a second? And I was like, yeah, yeah. And when I went to his room, he sat down and he was cleaning a pair of shoes with a toothbrush. <laughs> and there's this thing that some thugs do. You've probably seen it on TV, on the news. But it's where they, they, they use a word. They, sometimes it's a big word, but they use a word that is not used often, but usually they're trying to do it to sound really smart. Or just like, they're trying to class up what, they're, what they would normally say. And my brother, as he's shining these shoes, which if, that is the most prison shit I've ever seen. It's like, <laughs> shining his shoes, there's a big, swole dude. <laughs> and he's like, he's not looking at me as he's doing this. He's like, so Jordan, what about them funds? <laughs> and I was like, what about them? <laughs> He's like, no, no, no. Talk about that money in my backpack. You gotta pay that back. And I was like, definitely, I definitely do. <laughs> and I'm not gonna lie, I was terrified. He's a fucking big guy. He definitely could have hurt me very easily. But over the, ca the course of the next few weeks, um, I started to pay him back, slowly but surely. But the whole time I was like, this is going to be one day that he's like, it's not coming fast enough. I got to take it in blood. <laughs> but luckily for me, at that point in his life, he was going through his reformed thug period. So he couldn't do that. He was better than that. He was trying to overcome that. And he did. Eventually I paid him back in full. Nothing bad happened. But this year... This is so weird. This year we were at uh, a funeral, but it was kind of like a party. I mean, it's just like it's a lot of food. I mean, it wasn't a funeral. It's just a wake. It was like it was after. a lot of food, a lot of drinks, and at some point, um, he said to me, "We haven't talked about this in like this is this happened in 2004. It's 20, ten years. We haven't talked about this in ten years." And he said to me at this at this wake or this celebration celebration of life is what it was called a celebration of life. It's a good shrimp, good shrimp. Um, he was like, he's like, yo, Jordan, remember when you took all that money from me? I was like, yeah. He's like, woo! I almost fucked you up, dog. <laughs> and now I can understand that the moral of this story is if you're gonna risk life and limb for fashion, Make it Armani, not American Eagle. <laughs> That's my time in George Swami. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'll be so much.